What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Loot Bros Podcast. I'm your host, Resident Daryl, and this week is yet another solo episode, but it will be jam-packed full of great, great content, some late breaking news, uh, impressions on the PS Portal. Not going to go too crazy. You know, Gareth and I are getting together next week. Uh, he will be returning to the show, and we'll be talking about the PlayStation Portal. i got some great recommendations for you guys. And I've got some other fun stuff planned. So with that being said, let's kick this show off with a toast. This toast goes out to the Patreon producers. Thank you so much. Emzy, Sadik, Matt, and JT. Thank you guys for all of your continued support. I hope you guys have enjoyed the content that we have up on the Patreon and More stuff coming your way. That's right. We've got, again, the Pledge Deep Dives. We've got the review for the Apollyon 20XX. Spoiler-free review from my boys over there at Godfo. Uh, You can pre-order that that book right now. Go to Indiegogo. Actually, I'll have the link in the description of the show. But yes, uh, if I am recording these dogs are wrestling, they are in the background as usual. So if you hear my ferocious 17 pound shih tzu he looks like a little roll of sausage a little fatty uh back there beating up on our goldens well just 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 know that he is the king of the castle he's gonna let everybody in the house know that so all right guys a little bit more housekeeping go check out resident daryl on youtube that is where my kids and i get together and we hunt down video games comic books action figures all this cool stuff i got so Many pickups to talk about. So much crap. I got a list. Like, it's crazy. I'm over here recording a podcast, and I really should be listing. Guys, Thursday is the new day of the week that I'll be releasing the podcast. It used to be Monday. It used to be, let's start the week off with the Loot Bros. And more and more, I've learned that Thursdays are better days to release the podcast. So the past few weeks, I've kind of put it out a little bit later and later, trying to find the cadence of what works with my editing schedule, um, you know, church and you know, my work and my reselling business and whatnot, which I'm going to get into that in a minute. So Thursdays are going to be the new official target date each week for the Loot Bros podcast to go live. And uh, things, you know, stuff comes up. I've got two guests planned for next week. So things, you know, this might jump around a little bit. But just to kind of give you guys an idea of where my head is at when it comes to dropping the show, I'm thinking Thursdays are going to be the day. I think that's my my intended day to drop. So we'll see what happens. So uh, Resident Daryl on YouTube, guys, go check it out. We dropped a new video, huge seal video game haul, tons of sales, sold way more of it, way faster than we ever imagined. So go check that out. That's a great video there on the YouTube. We are getting closer and closer to a thousand subscribers. So guys, what are you doing? If you listen to the show and you haven't subscribed to Resident Daryl on YouTube, you got to do it. Don't do it for me. I got three kids. I got kids. Do it for the kids. <clears throat> so with that all being said, the platform that we are selling all these video games on, guys, is Whatnot. And Whatnot has been a game changer for us. Now, I'm not reading an ad. I'm not trying to sell you this because, well, I do get stuff for it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't. But what I want you guys to know is that Whatnot is like a it's like Twitch plus eBay. It's a live auction site. If you click the links down in the description below and you go to Whatnot, you sign up using my link, you get $10 free to spend with any person on the platform. Any video games, comic books, movies, garage sale items, estate sale items, crazy stuff. Sometimes dudes are selling money. Sometimes they're selling watches. Like It's, it's wild. They got this storage wars um, auction contest going on today. Crazy, crazy stuff. Right, go check out whatnot. It is an absolute blast. I love it. I love just having it on during the day, watching the different creators, excuse me, sell video games, sell movies, and I am constantly buying stuff on there. It's a great way to get cool stuff for cheap. And again, if you use my link, you get ten dollars. And then if you use that and you make your first purchase, I get ten dollars. That's crazy. It's freaking crazy. It's free money. Get it while it lasts. You know, get it while it's still there. So. Again, trying to tell you guys about whatnot without sounding like a paid for you know paid for ad is it's difficult because I mean it's a pitch you got to you just got to go check it out for yourself. So that being said, guys, 
Go check out the Patreon. You know, again, one more thing for you to sink your money into. <laughs> Extra content on the Patreon each and every month. And I've got an idea for the Patreon. I'm going to try to do some recruiting. Okay, so myself and Josh Adams, we're going to be doing uh, deep dives each and every month. Okay, our podcast expenses, expen- yeah, expenses, they've gone up dramatically. The program that we use, it went from a free hobbyist plan to a twenty dollar a month plan to, I actually they hit me with the fifty dollar a month plan this month. So, guys, the way that will help us offset costs on doing these podcasts and doing this different stuff is to go subscribe on the Patreon. You can get involved for as little as a dollar on Patreon and there's extra content for you each and every month. If you get in at the $5 tier, that's where the deep dives happen. So you get all the $1 tier perks and you get the $5 tier perks. Of course, we have producer uh, tiers and the pledge tier, the top tier. If you want to make me play a game of your choice. So, Guys, go check it out. Tons of great content available on the Patreon. And there's hundreds of episodes on there. So if you join now and you've never been a patron, guess what? You have access to an insane amount of content. I try to make sure everything's evergreen. I've always tried to stay away from the newsy type stuff and lean into more of the content that like at any point in time you could pick up this particular game. Like right now, I'm playing through Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Uh, on PS4, I'm going through the PS4 trophy list right now just because I really enjoy the game. I'm playing it on my portal. It looks absolutely amazing. And I beat the PS5 version a long time ago. There's a review on our Patreon, a deep dive for Cold War. So if I remember correctly, it's me, Tanner, and it is the affectatious donk, CJ. We all get together and talk about it. So. Uh, Lots of great conversations on there, lots of great reviews. But the idea with the Patreon content is to make it evergreen. So even if it's topical, I try to pick topics that aren't like this week in news. And we're going to talk about some news stuff today. Um, So, you know, sometimes that stuff kind of creeps its way in. But for the most part, guys, the Loot Bros content, I try to make it evergreen. So at any given point in time, you can go on there and be like, oh, wow, this is this still applies today. Now. Go check out the Patreon. Go check out Whatnot. Go check out Resident Daryl on YouTube. Now let's get into the business. So as far as games I've been playing, this has been a good week. So now that I have the portal, now that I have access to playing games when I want, how I want, I played a little bit of stuff. So three games this week we're going to talk about. The first one, NFL Blitz. Now this has absolutely nothing to do with the portal. But I played a little bit of NFL Blitz on the PS3 uh, a few few days ago, randomly during the middle of the day sometime. I had like an hour to kill, and I was like, you know what? I kind of want to play some some foosball. So I played, fired up NFL Blitz, ended up popping a trophy or two. I don't even remember. I only have four of the 20, So, uh, but I was playing through some Blitz. It's a blast. It's a fun game. I've sold the uh, Nintendo 64 copy of Blitz like three or four times. And so anytime I see it, I'm like, man, I want to play Blitz. And so I end up just deciding to go and play that one. So having a good time with it. And uh, who knows? I might chip away at it a little bit more. So I've taken a break from Earth Defense Force on the Vita. Um, I did play it a good bit, but I'm like 55, 60 levels deep in the game. Apparently it's got like 90-ish levels and you got to beat it on every difficulty, every mission with all three characters. And... I'm getting kind of burnt out. So I think that like my lofty goals of getting the platinum on this game are far, far behind me because I just don't know that I can continue to play it and enjoy it unless something I unlock some crazy gun with some crazy perks and that allows me to f- fly through the game, which it won't happen because it's got like a billion hour trivia. So uh played a little bit of WWE 2K22. And when I mean a little bit, I mean 10 hours in the past week using the portal. Guys, I'm going to get into the, my impressions of the portal a little bit later. And then next week, Gareth and I are doing a full-on review of the portal in the show. Um, I've got a lot of testing and a lot of things to do, a lot of different environments to try it in. So I'm not ready. But playing... WWE 2K22 on the portal has been a game changer. I'm going through the My Rise um, story missions, and it is a grind. You know, it takes a little while, 
And so I kind of like, as much as I enjoy um, playing it, you know, as much as I enjoy it, it's just like, here's a match, here's a match, here's a match. My character's a level 99. I've, you know, I've been, I've already been the NXT champion. I've already been the uh, NXT North American champion. I uh, just won the SmackDown championship. I got to move over to Raw and get the Raw championship. And then I got to do it all over again with the ladies. And it takes a long time. And so, and I'm enjoying the game. So I'm going to keep doing it. But it's one of those games to where if that was the sole game I'm playing, I'm playing for, I've got 42 hours in the game and a total of 15 trophies. And oh, I'm having a great time, but geez, like it's just not like it's, that's, that's, that's a lot of time for trophies that aren't necessarily giving me great score across the different competitions that we're involved in. So playing it while watching movies has been excellent. So my son and I, which I'll get into later, have been watching some movie, a series of movies together, quite enjoying it. And um, I've been chipping away at my at my matches. I've also been laying in the bed playing the portal, chipping away at my matches for a couple hours a night. And it's such a good time. It looks great. It plays amazingly smooth on there. So <laughs> that's awesome. It's been it's been fun. Two K twenty four just got announced. I believe it's got a March. Uh, release date. I'm excited about it. I'm going to play it. You know, I, I didn't even buy 23 yet, so I will eventually get them all. I I buy every wrestling game. Um, but 22's got its hooks in me, and I took a break from 22 to play AEW for forever. So, yeah, fight forever, actually. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Um, so, I'm just bouncing back and forth. I'm having a good time. Platinum is unattainable now. They've shut the servers down, so I'm just going to play until I get tired of it, and then I'll move on to the next one. So the last game that I want to talk about, we have a deep dive available on the Patreon. So if you get in at the $5 tier, you have access to this deep dive. It is Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. <clears throat> excellent, excellent game. So I've got, I told you guys, um, actually it's a Patreon exclusive episode. Uh, the Patreon exclusive episode is called Live It Well. And on that episode, I share a story of an old friend of mine who recently passed away. And throughout that process, that week of him, maybe he's going to make it, maybe he's not going to make it, I um, had a couple come-to-Jesus moments. Not necessarily. I, I, they're, they're super important to me. I don't know that they're super important to anyone who, everyone who's listening to this, but like to me, it seemed important. I often have a ton of you guys, the listeners, to associate with, to talk to. Uh, but I don't have any guys local to me that are, that I, I would, I have close friends. I, I just don't have a lot of friends. As a matter of fact, it's a running joke that I only have internet friends. And, you know, my wife has, been very adamant that like you need to invest in people and invest in in friends. I know a ton of people and I run into a lot of people that know me. Um, I have many leather bound books. My apartment smells of rich mahogany, but for whatever reason, I just haven't, I just don't have that bestie, that hashtag bestie. So the joke, the running joke is that dad doesn't have any friends. That's, that's the joke in the house. So um, throughout this whole process with my friend uh, Travis passing away, a couple of the guys that go to church with him that we've all been mutual friends for, I mean, since the third grade. Yeah, I've known all these guys. Uh, we kind of, you know, kind of came into contact with each other, and I told them specifically, I was like, man, this whole thing's got my head messed up, and I'm going to make a better effort to invest in the relationships that I have and to be a better friend to the people around me, you know what I'm saying, and hang out with these dudes. So, so this week we did just that. We played Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Now we played online. We weren't face to face, although we did just recently see each other. Uh, but we're texting back and forth. I'm checking in on the guys, making a cognizant effort, of very similar to how, and a lot of you guys maybe don't know this, but uh, the podcast bros. So <clears throat> me, Joe, Thomas, Matt, um, and Zach, the bearded nerd. I, I we reach out to each other. On a regular basis, some of us we've got this we got this group thread that we talk in every day, and then every now and again, when I haven't heard from one of the guys specifically, I'll reach out to them and say, "Hey, just doing the old bros check in." Uh, but we're trying to make sure that I am being intentional and in fostering these friendships. So that being said, we jumped into some Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, and it was an absolute blast. 
So we jump in and play some of the zombies, which you guys know. I don't play a ton of this stuff, but I did play a fair amount of zombies with my kids. And we actually lasted super rusty, easily a year removed from playing. That lasted until around 41. Took us a few hours, had a good time, got a bunch of kills. I got like something like, I don't know, a ton of kills. Uh, but we had some good conversation, and I played, and it really fired up this this idea. I was like, man, I want to go back through that campaign now. So once we wrapped it up for the night, playing some uh, playing some zombies, I decided I would grab the portal. You're going to hear me say this a lot. <laughs> and uh, I went and laid in bed, and I played through you know some of the campaign on the portal. Now. It played absolutely stunningly. Looked amazing, flawless, smooth. You can feel the vibration in the controller. Super, super, super dope. So really, really digging my time with the portal so far. And uh, that was technically the last game that I played for what I've been playing. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'm going to just kind of coast that right into my portal time. Might even make a little jingle. So it's morphin' time. It's portal time. But uh, guys, this portal is freaking, it's a beast. Like this 8-inch screen, it's way bigger than I imagined, you know? Like I, it, this thing feels super sturdy and solid. It's got a great feel to it because it's a dual sense. So it doesn't feel weird in your hands. Like it's just, it's awesome. And again, like I said, the, uh, the vibration being in there, so when you're playing remote, it just feels, it's crazy. The screen is great. And again, the environment in the house is really, really great. Like it's, it's a good, solid internet. You know, if you remember back years ago in the Loot Rose podcast, that was not the case. I had the, no, call I called the Walmart internet. It was trash, but invested some money and some time and uh, the internet is good. And the experience has been phenomenal. But this thing is great for me. Now I'm going to stop right there. Because I'm going to do a lot of portal talk next week and I'm going to explain kind of like the setup, you know, and some of the things that I've tried so that you guys that are contemplating is the portal for me, you know, I'll be able to answer those questions honestly and give you some, you know, some good feedback. So that's where I'm at with the games that I've been playing and a little bit of portal talk. So very, very excited. I may or may not even have my portal in my hands right now. So it's really cool too, just to browse the store. Like if you don't necessarily want to play anything right now, but you want to see what what's on sale, like it's cool. I just sit there and peruse the stores. Oh, I want to download this, this, and this smoother than the app smooth. It's, and, and it doesn't feel like a waste. Like when you, when you're playing, uh, and you're actually in front of your console, in front of your TV and you're playing and you're like, Oh dang, let me just look at the store for 20 minutes. It just, just feels like a waste of my playtime. So now I can use the portal to peruse the store, get my stuff downloaded, and then go from there. So super, super, super satisfied with the portal so far. So that's what I've been playing. So now I want to jump into a couple of different things. We've got a topic to discuss, some some breaking news, something that happened as soon as we were getting ready to record. So I'm going to jump in that in a little bit, and this is going to piggyback off some conversations we've already had recently, so strap on and strap in, JT. Uh, but definitely um, just kind of want to cover a handful of things. We're going to talk about some recommendations, We're going to talk about some some films, and talk about some cool stuff, and some pickups. You know, you guys know the format when I do the solo shows, it kind of encapsulates a few things, not just you know, what games I've been playing. And since we don't have the rest of the cast here to talk about what they've been playing, I can I can slide in a couple other segments. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to jump into some pickups. So uh, pickups for the week have been pretty dry. So I talked about the huge sealed game haul that I picked up recently. And on my latest YouTube video, Resident Daryl uh, on YouTube, I do a little bit of a breakdown of what we got and kind of what we've made off of it. So I won't dive too much into that. I'd rather you just go see it because that's one of those things where seeing is believing. Um, but uh, some good pickups this week, some things kind of out of pocket for me. So I'm going to kind of start in reverse order of how I picked them up. Now, as far as the reselling goes, there's a handful of you guys who listen to the show that reach out to me regular and they say, hey, incorporate more of this stuff. We want to know, we want to learn and things to be on the lookout for. So the term BOLO, in reselling 
you know, is be on the lookout. So I picked up a couple bolo items this morning, things that are out of pocket for me. I've never picked up before, but mainly because I didn't want to pay what I've seen for them now that they're on everybody's radar. And so I picked up two items this morning and they are both DVD VHS combos. Okay. So there's the combo unit where you can want, it's got one side's got the DVD, one side's got the VHS player on it. And some of them even go as far as they'll record on DVD what you have on the VHS. Now, I didn't get anything fancy like that, but I went to one of my favorite thrift shops this morning. They used to set all the video games aside in a box and just let me buy the box off of them. They don't do that anymore. The guy that, that used to do that for me, he's not there. And the guy that's taking his place, he doesn't get out there and dig through the stuff to find the video games. So pretty much everything gets picked over and the game's connection is seemingly gone for me. But that's okay. I still go out there from time to time. And I still pick up some great stuff. I've picked up some great cameras from there. I've picked up um, uh, iPads. I've picked up computers. Um, I've got, I picked up a couple of MacBooks from there. Both of them still need to be repaired. I've got the parts. I just haven't done the repair yet. Uh, changing out batteries and what have you. So, you know, nothing, nothing crazy, you know, great, but I've made a decent amount of money and I've, I've had some decent flips and I've picked up some great stuff for the collection, specifically the PS3 collection. So I go out there today and I kind of check in with the boys, just kind of see how they're doing. And, you know, I talk to them kind of whatever. And I, I, I peek around and the last time I was there, they sold me a whole like two boxes of DVDs for 10 bucks. And there was some Blu-ray in there and actually a Sega Genesis game that they didn't realize was in the box. So that was cool. Not that it would have changed the price, but they said no video games. Everything we got picked over. And there's resellers that camp out waiting on their trucks to get there. So like I know who's getting the games, and it's fine. It is what it is. Uh, but they missed this. They, were, they got caught sleeping. So this was a little Sega Genesis game. I already sold it. Uh, it was like a... I can't remember if it was a golf game or a racing game or either way, it it sold for like three three to five dollars on uh on whatnot, just in a live auction. And um but I grabbed these DVDs and what have you, and I I just recently on whatnot was part of the Sundance Film Festival celebration. So a bunch of whatnot sellers got chosen in the space to sell DVDs and Blu-rays as part of a sun a promoted Sundance celebration. I gained hundreds of followers by doing this, made a few hundred bucks, and you know, all, I sold some video games in the process. So it was cool. It was definitely a great opportunity, something cool to participate in. And it allowed me to, you know, sell off a of hundred and fifty or so, you know, DVDs and Blu-rays. Um, so I picked up some stuff out there. So while I was there today, I was like, let me look back through. They got a couple more boxes of DVDs in, but it was all kind of junk. Nothing that I, that stood out to me that has any value. I did find a Blu-ray and I've been building up my Blu-ray collection and Blu-rays are selling really well on whatnot. So, uh, I grabbed a Blu-ray and the two uh, DVD combos. I was like, hey, man, how much you want for him? He's like, for you, $2 each. And these things are clean. You know, they look good. And I'm like, man, this if these work, I mean, that's easy. $60 to $100 flip. You know, can't beat that. So I picked them up, two bucks a piece, and got a free Blu-ray for my troubles. So that was cool. I ended up actually having it. It was the reboot of RoboCop, which I already have on Blu-ray. So that'll go in my uh, whatnot stack. And I do $2 starts on Blu-rays. So at the very least, I'll sell it for 2 bucks, And that'll pay for one of the combos. So not a bad little flip. Not a bad little pickup this morning. So again, a little out of, the, a little out of my space, a little out of my element. And you guys know I'm more of a video game guy. But we got to do what we got to do to make money to buy more you know, lots, a lot more halls of video games, especially when some of our sources, our plug has dried up. So from there, you know, I want to backtrack to an estate sale I showed up at. Now, I know that a lot of you guys are like, what the freak are we talking about here? And anytime I go to these places, I ask video games, consoles, video games, consoles, do you got it? And they're like, yes, they do. No, they don't. Yada, yada, whatever. So, um, I go to this estate sale. It was actually advertised as a garage sale. I show up. They're like, someone already came by and got the video game stuff. So I was like, bummer. But you're more than welcome to look around and we'll see what kind of deals you know we can make. So um, I uh, 
go check around and I see some furniture from my mom, a couple antique pieces I pick up, things that kind of, you know, Google lensed for high value on YouTube. And then I uh, come across this closet and it had a couple jerseys in there, some football jerseys and, and baseball jerseys. So I picked the jerseys up, $10 a piece, and some of the sole comps on them are around $160 to $180. Now, we'll see. Mine are a little dirty, you know, so I think I might only get half that. But, I mean, I think I'll triple my money easy, and I'll take that and build towards the game budget. So not a bad pickup at all. So next up, I'm going to end my pickups section with a ton of Japanese imports. Guys, I've been on a tear of Japanese imports, buying PSP stuff, PS Vita stuff. Like, it is crazy. And the games that released over there that didn't release over here, it's it's, it's insane. And for the price, I mean, I'm getting them for nothing. Uh, But I did pick up this really cool copy of Hatsu Miku uh, Project Diva F. And you open the Vita case up, and it has... Um, like this little debit card looking thing in there. So it's a little collectible debit card, some little little ads and cutouts and different things. It was pretty neat. I got it for like four bucks off whatnot. It was awesome. Picked up some Dragon Ball Z games on PSP on whatnot. And but the big the big piece, it hasn't come in yet, but I want it and it shipped. Is I won a Sega Saturn. No no connections, no controller. So it was a gamble. But for $38 is what I paid for it. So I got a Sega Saturn console for $38. Now, my brother has all the connections and cables and and, uh, controllers and stuff. So I'll test it over there. Um, But yes, I picked that up for $38 untested. It looked pretty good. Super excited about that. So that's a a couple of non-video gamey things and then a video gamey thing. All of these items are going to be flipped and sold to build the game budget because we have a plan for our, after our 1,000th episode, or excuse me, 1,000th subscriber uh, episode on YouTube, we're going to launch a new series, kind of something we're going to be focusing on. And it's going to be all about building that video game budget and buying games within the budget. I'm super excited to do it, so we'll kind of see what that you know what that lends itself into. So, as far as pickups go, uh, a little bit of clothing stuff. Again, I don't ever do clothing stuff. I don't I don't ever really do antiquey stuff. So I picked up a couple of those items, and then I picked up these combo units. We'll see how they do. I'm going to test them. I bought a giant pallet of DVDs, Blu-rays, video games, and VHSs. So I'm going to try it out and see where where it takes us, see what it gets us. So um, that being said, guys, we're going to jump into recommendations. So I said last week on the episode, I really like this app, Letterbox. Now, Letterbox is an app I'm using to keep up with and catalog the films that I'm watching. Shout out to Gareth for sharing this with me. And so I read out some of the stuff that I had watched you know, last week. Well, now... My son and I have been going through the amazing Spider-Man movies, okay? And I remember the first one being really good, the second one being kind of mid to not great. Like the Jamie Foxx's Electro character, I remember being kind of sucky, you know, and not liking it. Then you fast forward to Spider-Man No Way Home, and they kind of have the crescendo to that story arc, kind of. And I remember that being awesome. It really makes everything great, you know? So my son and I went back and we st- we watched Amer- uh, Amazing Spider-Man 1. And I stand by that as an excellent film. That is a great portrayal of Peter Parker. I like him as the loner skater guy. I like that. Um, and I think, I mean, I definitely like it better than Tom Holland. I think Tom Holland Spider-Man is super annoying. It is not for me. Um, I don't like MJ, Michelle Jones. Uh, I don't even like Ned. I mean, I think they, they're, they're fine, but I don't, it's just too, it's too comical. It's not really my thing, you know? And I think that Tom Holland, Spider-Man is super, super annoying, but I know that's what he's, that's, that's, he's playing this character. He's playing the younger, goofier Spider-Man. That's what he's there for. It's fine. I'm not here to hate on it. I'm not here to make, make it out like it's this terrible thing. 
But I'm just saying it is not for me. And there's great things about those films. But by and large, those films are not my Spider-Man films. Okay. Uh, I remember Tobey Maguire Spider-Man being a little campier and a little, little cringier over the years than it was when I saw him in the theaters. Okay. So, um, we were having a discussion over on Spider-Man in the house. And I said, we need to watch the amazing Spider-Man one and two, and then watch no way home again. So you have context on what was happening there. So we watched amazing Spider-Man and it was amazing. It's a great film. I think it's a solid four and a half out of five, eight out of 10 kind of thing. Like it's just, it's good. It's not great. Um, but it's not bad. You know, I think my biggest critique of it would be I don't love the way that the lizard work looks. He looks too humanoid in the head and, um, you know, too. I think if he had a little bit more of a snout that he would be a much better looking um, uh, villain, in my opinion. But other than that, the movie was great. I really, really liked it. OK. And then we watched The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, about a week later, or maybe not even a full week later. And we set the table. It, guys, it was, you know, we got the 55-inch 4K going. We're watching it on Blu-ray. I don't have a 4K copy of it, so we're just watching it on Blu-ray. And we got the Samsung, you know, sound bar with the subwoofer cranked, okay, to the max. Lights out. Um, and it was just a great film viewing experience. And... I enjoyed The Amazing Spider-Man 2 much more on my third watch than I did on my first two. As a matter of fact, I think that Spider-Man himself and everything with Gwen was was much better. Um, I think he was a little more quippy, a little more what you expect out of a season, more seasoned Spider-Man, which was good. Um, a little less of the loner this time. Um, I don't love the portrayal of uh, Norman Osborn and uh, Harry Osborn. You know, I don't hate it, but I just think he's a little dry. You know, here he is. And I think that the story behind the, the way they ground out the spider and they ground out the um, the goblin and the lizard creations or whatever, trying to make them a little more, I guess, believable. I thought it was good. But what happens kind of with the goblin feels a little rushed and it's not amazing. You know, I think that's probably one of the weaker spots of the movie. But I think Jamie Foxx's performance was actually better than I remembered it. Uh, this whole loner guy who just wants to be noticed, he just wants a friend, and just, I don't know, everything about that just was, I liked it. I liked it better this time. I also liked, and I always like this, but I really loved it when the right setting, the sound, when a, like that almost dubstep wobble sound when Electro is firing off on his powers and charging up, it really is a great like setting for uh, just an action sequence. And that's a beautiful film. It's, it, it's so great on Blu-ray. It's got a tremendous amount of color and it is just freaking, it's cool. It's very cool. I, I very much enjoyed it. I liked it way better than I did the first time and the second, my second watch. And so I recommend it. I don't know that it's going to be for everybody. I don't know that everyone has the growing appreciation for those films like I do. Uh, and I know that I am notorious for liking the least popular films in the superhero genres. Uh, but definitely enjoyed it way, way more. And I think this experience. Also, the whole scene with Gwen. I don't want to spoil it here. But it made my son's jaw drop, you know. And if you know, if you know, you know. But like for him, it the, like experiencing this with him, he was like, "Dad, this movie was amazing. He really, really enjoyed it, you know." And I thought it was good. So now we're gonna we're we're watching. We're currently halfway through Spider Man No Way Home for the second time, and we had to stop it just because we had church last night. So we're going through and watching it now, and we're just getting ready to get into the parts that tie in with that particular universe. So, um. You know, fresh eyes, fresh experiences with my kids. It's just, it makes films better. It makes movies better. I enjoyed The Grudge more. I enjoyed The Ring more. Um, I enjoy certain video games more, playing it, th playing through it with them. So sometimes, guys, a fresh, just you know, a fresh 
experience with people who've never seen it can even change, you know, your perception of, of, of the movie or the game itself. So sometimes the experience is more, is more about the complete package than it is just the watching a movie, especially if you, and if you don't watch movies in the right setting, they are better or worse. Like if you just watch a movie on your phone, it's, it's just so flat. And so it, no, I feel like nothing connects. I can't watch movies on my phone. I can watch some TV on my phone or iPad, but I got to have headphones in. I got to have like my focus in. like, it's, it's a whole thing. The reason why the theater experience is the preferred experience. And if you can emulate that, that's the best way to do it. Is because you have a giant screen, you have loud sound, it's dark, and you're focused. You know? So experiencing this movie again that way is the way to do it. I had an absolute blast. Absolutely loved it. And um I have a much better appreciation for it. So we will see next week when I come back, you know. Uh well, actually next week we've got guests. So it'll probably be a, two weeks from now before I do another solo show. Could even be on the Patreon. I don't know. Before we dive into those films. So maybe that those films as an arc, one, two, and then the No Way Home. We'll see. We'll see. I got some stuff planned for it though. I definitely want to have more conversations. And I think I might even bring my kid on to see what his experience was. So this morning on the way to school, we did put in the Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man one and let them, when he listened to that while the uh, young kids watched it in the back. So he's already like, Oh man, like I, I gotta, I gotta see this one now. So again, going through and experiencing these movies again with my kids, it cha- it just, it's a, it's, it's, it adds to the experience. I don't know that the movie changes. Sometimes things feel a little bit different when you're watching with your kids, but definitely enjoying it. So Jumping from there, let's get into the hot topic. This one is coming in hot from The Verge. All right, guys, this would be this week's official topic. Okay, this is kind of hot enough, in my opinion, to where. So, now we knew this was coming. I called this, if you're listening, JT, I called this a year ago. If you go back and listen to the Loot Bros podcast, I said this will happen. And the headline reads, Microsoft lays off 1,900 Activision, Blizzard, and Xbox employees. Blizzard president Mike Yabara has also decided to leave, and Blizzard's survival game has been canceled. This is written by Tom Warren, senior editor, covering Microsoft over on The Verge. I'm not going to pull a trivia horse and read the whole uh, the whole article, guys. Uh, go jump into it yourself, but... It says that the cuts are roughly 8% of the overall you know, Microsoft gaming division, that which stands at about 22,000 people. Um, and so Phil Spencer had confirmed the layoffs, and they've been, you know, it's kind of been working on this for the past couple months. Uh, but, you know, they got to cut back. Everyone's cutting back. PlayStation's had some layoffs and canceled some games. Other companies have had some layoffs and canceled some games. It seems like it's kind of that season. Everyone was staffing, 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 buying, buying, buying. And now it's like, oh, wait, we got all these people. The pandemic is over. Less people are subscribing to our our services. Less people are playing video games as a whole. People are outside touching grass, as the kids say. So this is this has been on the horizon. And and I'll say this across tech altogether, there's been a lot of layoffs in general. I think Facebook meta just laid off a ton of people recently as well. Um, But, you know, it seems like a lot of these people were, you know, redundant jobs. Like, you know, you got to think there are people at play at, uh, at Activision. There are people at Blizzard. There are people at Microsoft that all did the same thing. And when you combine them all under one, one particular umbrella, you know, it's, uh, Someone's going to have to go. But what was interesting is that Mike Yabara had left um, Blizzard. Now, he'd been there for over 20 years. So he'd been with uh, 20 years at Microsoft. And uh, he, he was seen through that whole acquisition. He became Blizzard's president. And it's pretty interesting that he decided to leave. I think it's also interesting um, that... We had, uh, and we'll see what kind of what comes out of this. This this, this article is not super in depth. It just kind of basically rehashes the title, but in more words. Um, but you know, recently, um, 
Well, it's Pete Hines left uh, Bethesda. And I think it's kind of interesting, right, that a lot of these big entities that Microsoft has picked up, that they've lost some of the figureheads, okay? We'll look at Tango Gameworks. Shinji Mikami, he's gone. You know, Pete Hines, he's gone. You know, Pete Hines and and Kalai's favorite Todd Howard, those were the figureheads for Bethesda, you know? And it's like once the dust settled, and I'm, I would imagine whatever, you know, prescient contract that they had signed was, you know, expired or they probably had a, Hey, you get X amount of dollars, but you can't leave for X amount of years. So once you're vested and your contract is, is, you know, you met your, your contract or whatever, then you can take your money and leave. So I, I'm sure that's what happened with P Hines. I'm sure that happened with Shinji Mikami. You know, he shipped a couple games through there. But I think it's interesting, you know, that another figurehead is gone. Now, Bobby Kotick apparently got his little golden parachute, which everybody wanted him to stay and run Xbox. I know I did. So I think that uh, he'd run a much tighter ship than your boy uh, Felipe L. Spencero. That's Spanish for Phil Spencer. Uh, would you know, definitely ran, you know. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I think it's very interesting, very telling that all the Xbox and the White Knights were all PlayStations, blah, blah, blah. Jimmy Ryan's out. Jimmy Ryan's fired. You know, the PlayStation canceled some games. PlayStation closed the studio. You know, all the heat was coming down from the PlayStation jealousies. And now here we are, and, and Microsoft just left 1,900 people. That's a lot of jobs, guys. But as with the... Uh, the great philosopher Tricky Mix says that's what happens when you pay seventy billion dollars for Call of Duty trophy. By the way, trophy. I never get trophies on the show anymore. That's awesome. Trophy on the show. Let's go. Might even throw in the dubstep. So, uh, but yeah, guys, that's uh, that's kind of the the news circulating. Now, there's a bunch of stuff on X on the on the Twitter, kind of rehashing the same information and all the articles I've clicked on. I don't see anything new yet. So as this story unfolds, I'm sure we'll get more and more. And I definitely will be tuning in to Defining Duke, the Xbox podcast over under the uh, Last Stand Media umbrella. Party foul, I took the mic with my headset. I'll definitely be uh, tuning into that one because uh, I think that, that, you know, those guys give a pretty good and honest view of everything. And I, I like the opinions of, uh, you know, on even though they try really hard to you know, be fair to Xbox, I think that every now and again, they'll cut you an honest opinion on kind of what's going on. And it seems a little, seems a little dire. We'll see. Uh, another, another, I don't know if it's necessarily a news article going around, but you guys know last week I mentioned that, you know, it's been confirmed. Xbox is, it's so funny because, and I, and I gotta, I gotta take a minute because I, I said on the podcast that, Xbox games, all the all the the leakers have been saying Xbox games are coming to PlayStation, they're coming to Switch. So I said on the podcast, guys, I've been saying that for a long time. That's got to happen. They need people to buy their games. Okay, it makes good business sense, and I'd love it. I'd I'd be the first one to line up buy an Xbox game on PlayStation, especially if it's one of the ones that I really, really, really want to play again, a la Gears of War. Okay, so. And that comes to fruition literally like the same day, or at least it's confirmed, the same day or the day after that uh, the podcast goes live. So I'll chalk that one up as a little win. Uh, but then, you know, this whole thing with Microsoft and the layoffs, I called that one a year ago, guys. Called that one. So that's that's pretty good. So I, I think that it's pretty interesting how things are starting to unfold. And uh, But there's another little piece kind of going around that really tells the tale of Microsoft's physical sales and what their business model means for big retailers. Now, a lot of the reselling groups, a lot of the eBay groups and stuff that I'm a part of, and uh, game collector groups, there are, there's an email going around from, um, I guess it's the merchandising department at Walmart. But they said as of January 22nd to go in and mark down all copies, all physical copies of Starfield down to three cents or as low as three cents. Okay. Point zero three. And they said um, that in the future, they're going to be stocking less and less 
Xbox games, okay? And they're going to go ahead and start phasing them out. So because of the Xbox games and how they don't sell, because Game Pass has been, the, the you know, they've trained their audience not to buy games. You know, I know I get pushback, and I know certain people are going to write into me. They're going to like, but Resident Evil, no, 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 no. It is a proven fact that Game Pass subscribers buy less games. They don't, well, they don't buy games anymore, okay? They, they just don't. I don't, I don't, you know, Phil Spencer used to say the Game Pass subscribers do buy games and they do spend money on the platform, but I, they're not buying their games. At least they're not buying them physical because Walmart has already proven that no, 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 they don't buy it. We're not selling them. We keep having to liquidate them. And now we're going to even start phasing out the stuff that's most recently dropped. So, uh, starting with Starfield. So I went on the 22nd and the 24th. Okay, to my local Walmarts, and there are zero copies of Starfield in the building. So if you guys are listening to this, go to your local Walmart. You might be able to pick up a copy of Starfield on the Xbox Series X for as low as three cents. Uh, I would imagine that the resellers are going to get box loads of this game. I'm sure it didn't sell very well physically. I mean, it sold. It charted. It was in the top 10 or top 11. I think it was number 11. Uh, on the charts for last year. So it did sell, but it didn't sell enough to keep them in you know, with Walmart. And just using Walmart as an example, it looks like they're going to be phased out in the future. So buy Xbox games while you can and sit on them. Okay, guys, if you're listening to me right now, this is my advice to you. Go buy your Xbox One games, your Xbox Series games, and sit on them. Because when they become more and more uh, unavailable, yeah, you know, Best Buy's already and Target, they've already said they're starting to phase out physical media. They're going to start with DVDs and Blu-ray. And uh, I would imagine 4K and um, games are going to be the last thing out the door. But it is happening, you know. More and more people are switching to streaming services and more and more people are switching to digital. And it's we're starting to see the big ripples. Now, GameStop, there's literature going around that GameStop's going to start selling the DVDs, Blu-rays, and stuff like that. So your secondhand stores and your mom and pop's places, places like Resident Daryl on eBay and YouTube, uh, not YouTube, uh, well, on YouTube, yeah, but on whatnot, I'm going to constantly be turning that stuff out because I am hashtag forever physical. Uh, but guys, Grab you some stuff and sit on it for a little while. I think even, I just made a mistake. I just sold like 13 copies of FIFA 23. And I didn't even consider the fact, because I was so worried about getting stuck with them, you know, that I didn't even consider the fact that, wait, this is the last FIFA title. It's FC 24 now. So, or I think that's right. Football, football championship 24 is what it's called. I think the last FIFA is 23. So I, there's a good possibility one day that FIFA 23 is going to be worth some money, especially if FIFA never finds another company to do their license. Now, the r- reports were that they were looking, but they also wanted like $1.8 billion for the license. Something crazy. So, mm. so referring back to the Bolo. Be on the lookout, guys, for cheap copies of Starfield. Grab them up while you can. I would also uh, be on the lookout for whatever ends up being the last released copies of said games. Okay? I think that kind of stuff's kind of important. Personally, we'll see what happens. You know, it could be it could be nothing. It could be a big fat nothing burger, and the main places get rid of this stuff, but this the other places carry it forever and it never really goes up in value. It is interesting, and I am always curious to see what's next. So I'm, I'm excited, kind of. I'm, I'm kind of excited because I wouldn't mind getting some really good deals, and I wouldn't mind getting some really cool, you know, whatever, you know, some, some stuff, you know, things that turn rare. I would love to be right on this one, but you never, ever, ever know. So uh, that's kind of the big news items right there, guys. Xbox is is kind of staying in the news, but I don't think for the right reasons. Uh, an, I think another bad thing is uh, it's good and bad. Uh, we just got the release date for for uh, Hellblade 2, Senua Saga, but no physical release. As of yet. And th- that might all be part of the same story. So, uh, Alan Wake 2, no physical release. And the game was one, a game of the year contender. 
Uh, so who knows what's going to happen, but uh, my stance right now, okay, is at least in the beginning, if you know, don't release a physical version, I'm not buying the game, okay? That's just for me, and at least in, the, in, in when, a, when a brand new game comes out, no physical, no buy. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't give in to the digital future. I know it's going to happen. I'm not, I'm not stupid. So I know I'm going to catch some heat. I'm going to get some, I'm going to get some messages, you know, can't believe you, blah, blah, blah. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to end with the true trophies, uh, PlayStation leaderboards. Now, Last week when I read out the uh, the achievement leaderboards, they were so sad. We didn't even have five people on the list, you know, participating. So right now we got 13 people on our list of 37, okay, that actually have some trophies this week. So all in all, it's low across the board. Don't get me wrong. And I'm low too. I didn't even make it top five. So I get it. I am not saying that, you know, no, I'm not judging hard. Just judging a little bit. So here we go. First place, Misi Goats a lot. 62 trophies. Playing some Power Wash Simulator. Misi Goats a lot. I got a question for you. If you made it this far in the show, please write into one of the forms, whether it be through our Discord or our Facebook group. Are the trophies fixed in Power Wash Simulator? Because last I heard that there's a game breaking or trophy breaking bug for the platinum, and you couldn't get the platinum in that game. So let me know if that's been fixed. I'd be curious. To find out, second place, Red Beer Rick with 30 trophies, finishing up that Dead Space 3 Platinum. Red Beer Rick, if you're listening, um, I am very interested in setting up some time to play through the multiplayer with you. I don't remember what trophies I do and don't have for it, but I do know that I've beaten the game in co-op. But I would 100% play that with you. Um. So you can get those trophies. I don't have any issue at all doing that. And there might be a couple here and there that I could get as well. Yeah, I can already see a couple miscellaneous ones. I got to complete the game in classic mode, pure survival, hardcore. Don't know that I'm interested in doing all that. I got to get all the artifacts, the weapon parts, yada, yada. I got to find ping. I didn't even find ping. But I'll be 100%. Oh, look here. Revive your co-op partner 10 times. Yep, got to do that. So face all of Carver's demons by completing all co-op only optional missions. I miss those. So, hey, I'm your guy. I'll do it. Now, I know there's a five hour time difference with us, so it'll be a little tricky, but I don't mind. And I ain't talking about a trophy horse tricky either, but I don't mind trying to trying to make that happen. So I enjoyed that game. I played it with friends of the show, uh, Levi, the franchise killer. And uh, we had a good time. Tons of elevators. Biggest complaint about that game? So many freaking elevators. It's annoying. It's awful. Third place, MZ Nitro. 26 trophies. Playing some Mud Runner. Got to get muddy. Fourth place, James Waldron. 2012. That is Rebby Rick's son, I believe. 19 trophies. Playing some Dismantle. And in fifth place, I'm styling on your bro. Playing some Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, I tied Stink Palm, and and you know, I'm in ninth place, technically. Um, <laughs> it's pretty terrible. So I'm going to get more trophies this week, guys. I will be at the top of the leaderboard for sure next week. And if not next week, maybe the week after. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to land the plane. A couple reminders. Okay. Go. Check out Resident Daryl on the YouTube channel. Please help us get that subscriber count up to 1,000 so we can destroy these copies of Connect Adventures and rid ourselves of the stink that uh, is the Xbox games. I'm just kidding. Uh, but real talk. And then, uh, yeah, go check out the uh, YouTube, guys. Yeah, YouTube, go check out the Patreon. Um, follow, us, follow me on Whatnot. Go on Whatnot, guys. You sign up for Whatnot. If you listen to this, Sign up for whatnot. Get your free $10. You don't have to spend it with me. If you spend it with me, I might throw some extra in your bag. I don't know. We'll see. No promises. But guys, go check all that stuff. We appreciate you so much. Always remember, here on the Loot Bros Podcast, our motto is forever physical and animates for perps. Perps.